Our story begins with what can be described as nothing short of terrifying.
Awakening from what we thought would be an eternal sleep, we climb out of our coffin and begin to assess our environment. We notice a few empty pods in the body of a mind flayer as we normalize ourselves with this strange place. Might still be stuck inside if we hadn't been attacked. Someone else got out. Need to find a way forward. The door is open in a weird circular motion unlike anything I've ever seen before. We cautiously move forward. As we move into the next room, we smell the stench of a body laying on a table. We go search the man in hopes of finding anything he might not need anymore. As we move around the room, the only thing we can notice are all these strange alien devices. As we're trying to get out of this place as fast as we can, we hear a cry of help. As a paladin, we feel very obligated to help those in need. And so we thrust our hand into this strange device and ride the elevator. And to our utmost amazement, the thing crying for help is a brain. Yes, we have come to save us from this place. From this place you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please, before they return. They return. I've never seen anything like this creature. It's more of a brain than a person. Being unfamiliar with the situation doesn't mean you have to be unkind. Sauron can feel the pain of the brain. Screaming, pleading for help. We're compelled to help. But sadly, we are not skilled enough. We attempt to remove the brain and fail miserably. The brain won't budge. Where our brain hasn't helped us before, our brawn always has. This time, not so much. Completely distraught, we make our way back down the elevator in hopes of making our way out of this hellhole. Soren hears the scream of a dragon as it screeches on by ready to kill anything in its path. Reaching her eyes into the sky, Soren seeks to find anything familiar in the strange environment. Meanwhile in the shadows, something familiar has found her instead. Together, we might 
address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. Lazel lunges forward, slaughtering the imp with one blow. Soren wastes no time and smashes her hammer of might into the winged beast. With a feeble attempt, the lone imp tosses a ball of flame at Lazel as she easily maneuvers around and brings the imp to its final resting place. Collecting her spoils off the bodies of the Hellions, Soren only feels urgency to leave this place. Walking to the door, Soren is prepared to fight hell itself. In a panicked state, Soren notices two humans on the left and presses the button in hopes to free them. To her surprise, they turn and attack her without hesitation. Lazel disposes of the first one with ease. Unsure of what to do, Soren can only get closer. Lazel watches in horror as Soren is assaulted with an acid splash to the face. Praying that her new friend is alright, she leaps forward with the eye to kill. Taking the advice of the black-haired woman, Saren approaches the strange device. The console appears dormant. The mechanisms are completely unrecognizable at first. Then you spy an empty socket. Nothing. The console remains dormant. With only her intuition, Soren begins to look around for any way to free the black-haired woman. Mistaking the glowing pod for something of value, Soren leaps and makes a grave mistake. Covering her and everything around her in this strange purple ooze. Faint images appear in your mind. A brain, a Githyanki warrior, and centuries of darkness. inside the pod she doesn't notice you anything of use Soren finds what she thinks may be the key to save the black-haired woman she frantically runs as fast as she can back to the strange device
become Solakia's dormant. The console hums to life. Suddenly, you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades, and another sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. As the black-haired woman falls to her knees, you're reminded of the urgency. You thought that damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness, because you have a gift with you. You keep dangerous company. Fair point. Looks like there's plenty of fighting ahead. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. Shadowheart. One moment. Finally. Let us make for the hell. We've wasted enough time already. She's right. Lead on. As time increases in value, we can only move to the helm. We are nearing the helm. Once inside, do as I say. Who put you in charge? I'll trust my own judgment. King Hank. Eager to show her grit in battle, Shadowheart jumps at the chance to hit the first imp. The mind player occupies the attention of the demon commander Zalk, showering his face with psychic energy. Sarn moves in to crush the toes of the hell dog. Lazel surges forward, eager to find a piece of anything she can get. Scared for its life, the imp makes a retreat and a sorry attempt to harm Lazel. Shadowheart finishes what she started and brings the imp down. Very much wanting to make it off this ship alive, she protects the Mind Flayer with her shield of fate and hopes he can occupy Zalk just long enough. Soren, very torn in the situation, only can move forward. Zalk displays one of his first feats of power, smashing the Mind Flayer. Shadowheart, in a panic, heals the Mind Flayer. Soren moves with the swiftness that only a gnome can have and heals her allies against the harsh attacks of Commander Zol.
Familiar with the blade and not afraid of death, Lazelle positions herself to help the Mind Flayer defeat the demon. Shadowheart nervously moves towards the ship helm, making sure to pick up anything for later. Eager to show his power as well. The Mind Flayer destroys Zalk with more psychotic energy. Beyond desperate, Soren lunges for the transponder, only to be met with two more Hellions. In an attempt to gain good footing against Zalk, Lazel thrusts a jab, but he's far too great of a demon. Feeling the pressure, Zalk swings in a furious rage with only destruction in mind as the Mind Flayer sidesteps him with ease. Torn between freedom and Zalk, Shadowheart tenderly throws a fireball. Willing to go down with this ship, the Mind Flayer exerts one more powerful charge into Zalk's chest. The ambitious and furious Noam Sorin destroys one of the imps and then attempts to push the Hell Dog out of her way, but alas, she is too small. Lazel feeling the time of life slipping by as she's pinned between Zalk, a wall, and the Mind Flayer, can only continue to impale Zalk with her blade. Shadowheart comes to the aid of her new friend Sorin and bashes the Hell Dog in the skull. The Mind Flayer begins to show his battle tiredness and misses Zalk by only a fraction. Escape is the only thing Soren can feel as she eagerly moves towards the transponder. With only hope in her eyes, she looks back at everyone that brought her this far. Will they be there? Screeches come from the hallway as two more demons of hell move for our bodies. As the party takes their last actions, Soren prepares to connect the transponder and hopefully save us all.